There's another one you don't want to hear. Frankly, you do I. Right now on the Power Chord Hour, I'm very excited to be joined by musician Mr. Mickey Lee, currently with his group Mickey Lee's Mutated Music. The band just released their debut record, Variants of Vibe. It is out now on Wicked Cool Records. And on top of Mutated Music, Mickey was also the frontman of The Rattlers, as well as many other bands, author of I Slept With Joey Ramone, a memoir about his brother Joey Ramone, which is currently being adapted into a film. So we got lots going on. So let's discuss new music and a whole lot more with Mickey. Mickey, how are you, man? I'm, I'm great, and I uh, welcome to fans of the Power Chord. Thanks, thanks. I relate. Man. I'm uh I'm excited. I mean, I guess to start off uh recording this, the record's been out like two days now, so I mean, congrats for getting that out. I'm sure uh, you're happy to finally like get this out into the world and everything. Um <laughs> I'm happy, my songs are happy, I, I, and I hope the listeners are will be happy. I think they w- I mean, it's a it's a really really fun record. I I've, I've really been enjoying listening to it. And I mean, again, it is your debut record, but how long has Mutated Music been around now? How long have you guys been uh, doing this? Um, well, not all that long. I've been playing with these guys uh, for decades in uh, <clears throat> various projects. But um, Mutated Music, I just... Well, I, I've had I, the name for a long time. It's the name of uh, my, the publishing company I, I created, but... Uh, just adapted it to for a band maybe I don't know three years ago. Um, so and, and uh, Wes, the bass player, had been in Florida and he finally came back to New York City. So it's been uh, about three years we've been getting this together. Have you uh, in those three years have you guys had a chance to like play <laughs> out much? Have you played many live shows with Mutated Music yet? Well, as you know, unfortunately, uh, the past couple of years is uh, makes it a little hard. The world has been a bit uh, preoccupied <laughs> <laughs> with uh, with you know not doing shows and uh, you know it's, it, it timing was not great, um, <laughs> but in a way it was because at least during those pandemic years, um, Stephen Van Zandt's label Wicked Cool was putting out the uh, singles of ours. Um, you know, inter- intermittently. So, so it wasn't uh, all bad. You got you got to do the music side, maybe not play out, but you got to do a lot of like the uh, you know like putting out song side of it. Exactly. We we got the ball rolling. You know, that's all. You, that's really all you kind of can uh, do. But well, and uh, you know, I hate to say it, but it, it might have been to our advantage. Things, everything was else was like you know not happening. All the big tours and all the big, uh, even the big awards show everything <laughs> yeah you're right stopped. so it, it kind of let put a, left the window open for us uh little guys to get through it how do uh you know how did the songs tend to get written on this record do you like three of you go in a room and bash out songs or do you kind of like bring ideas in and then like go from there how does like songwriting tend to work for you well i you know i write mostly myself i you know, those songs i wrote mostly back uh Myself and I, uh, like I say, last or uh, one of the songs I wrote with Lester Banks. Um, oh, nice! I was in a band with him, um, but no, we don't all really write together. It's uh, it's kind of it was began as as my project, and uh, I wasn't even sure who was going to be in it with me. I recorded a lot of those songs uh, just myself, me uh, with it with it, Pat, my drummer, um, before Wes came up. Uh, so that's why it's Mickey Lee's mutated music, you know. Um, is this basically so your? I write, the songs are written just like they. Are. <laughs> I've always written songs. If somebody has a great idea, I'm always uh, willing to collaborate with them. For uh, writing writing songs, are you someone who like music or lyrics come to you first, or does it just kind of depend on the song? You know, you you should never limit yourself. Whatever comes first, comes first. Whatever way it happens, let it happen. You know, you really never know how uh, how the song is going to develop. Um, it could just be a little chorus thing you hear in your head, a melody that you think would 
be a good for a chorus and don't even have words for yet. Um, you know, you just, as far as I'm, I, you know, I don't know how other people do it, but I, I just uh, let it happen. However it happens and be, be thankful every time <laughs> I, I write a song that I think is good. I, you know, well, I, you never know when you'll be the last great song. Is just me. <laughs> That's a great you know. point. <laughs> yeah. Are you someone who constantly writes music? Or are you someone who will more get like hit with bursts of inspiration where you'll like write a ton in kind of like a short amount of time and then go a while again without really writing? Um, y- yes. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit you, of both. You described me to a T uh, <laughs> in that last, the latter part. Um, you know, if I, there's, there's only been a few times like, um, uh, you know, when my, me and uh, the bass player I had a deal with Epic Records a long time ago, and they said, that, you know, here's some money, take off three months and write songs and make a, you know, a, a demo tape. And so I had to just go write new songs. But, um, you know, uh, you, I don't like to force these things, but sometimes, uh, you know, it's good. The pressure is good. Were you, uh, did you find yourself, right? I mean, I know, I know like we were talking about, you couldn't really play during the pandemic, but like, did you find yourself writing anymore during that time? I like asking this because I've talked to some musicians who the pandemic didn't like, it actually hurt their like creativity. Like, they didn't write at all. And then I talked to other people who just had like some of the biggest songwriting marathons of their career during that time. Like where, where would you say you fell during the uh, pandemic on like songwriting? You know, I, I I can kind of relate to the people who couldn't at all because it uh, it was so um, such a strange time. Um, I mean, I, I was in the recording studio and when um, on March thirteenth, twenty twenty, when the lockdown began, and, um, recording you know new songs uh, <clears throat> at that time, and then. Uh, it just uh, everything seems so bleak and uncertain. And I, I, you couldn't really think. I, I couldn't think about writing songs about uh, what was happening, you know. Um, but then I did. I wrote a song called Two Kinds of Law" after uh, the George Floyd eruption. Um, you know, I, I did write songs intimately, new songs uh, when I could not think about Donald Trump and what was all the craziness <laughs> going on out there. Uh, but yeah, there was, uh, there was plenty of uh, material out there to write about. No, I, I can see, honestly, like I'm kind of, I, I kind of go with your mindset though, where I'm like, I could see why you may not be flooded. Like during that time, it is so weird. That's like, I don't know, maybe now is, now is not the time to write a song. I, I can see where your mind would be like in yeah. other places during all that. It was such a sensitive time, uh, you, you know, to write about it. it people had people, you know, I don't know. I, where I live in Forest Hills, Queens, it, you know, it's kind of near Elmhurst Hospital, and the sirens were just constant. And I don't know, you just didn't feel like writing a song. <laughs> you know, kind you of, know? kind of going off that. I did want to ask you, like, with surroundings influencing your music. Like, do you feel like being in a place like New York City, like, just, just everything about it basically like do you think all of that kind of bleeds into like the mood or sound of your music do you think your like surroundings kind of influence how you write it all i'm sure they do subconsciously but um you know like a, a writer of a song a writer of anything uh usually not, comes to realize that you have to go out of your own experiences and uh environment and and you let your imagination take advantage of your imagination and and, and be anywhere, you know. I like you that. Be in the sky with diamonds. <laughs> 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 uh, you can't just uh, limit your creativity to you know your own shell. That makes sense. I mean, yeah, if you want to grow or you want to like do more and not be one dimensional, that totally. Uh... Well, the, the great thing about literature and writing, and even with songs, rock and roll, is you don't, you don't have to write about you know reality, <laughs> or you can. I mean, there's always that. 
So that- uh, and there's plenty of plenty of reality that that's that song worthy or uh, you know movie or play worthy, but you know it, it's uh, the beauty of it is that you can create your own scenes, your own world, your own universe. See, I like that. So you're not someone, and I was actually going to kind of ask you that too. Like when you write, if you kind of like kept to like your own personal experiences or if you could like take things from other places and other people and kind of write them like in that firsthand account and it kind of sounds like it does it sounds like you don't need to just write about just what's going on in your life it almost sounds like you as a as a songwriter you can take i mean other people's things other things you hear and morph that into a song you know almost where you're the person experiencing it yeah well you you know, when I wrote a book about my, you know, a memoir, of, of course, obviously I wanted to keep that totally realistic and uh, factual. But, um, you know, music is, is uh, for the imagination and uh, it's uh, it should take you to places where you can't go or you didn't think of going in your own mind. I like that. I really like that. When when it comes to like playing and mutated music, obviously you guys are a trio and uh, you are the sole guitar player. Do you find yourself? Because I'm sure throughout the years you you found yourself in bands where you're the only guitar player. Sometimes you have a second one. Does your like do your does your style or your technique or just your role in the band kind of change when you're the only guy up there doing it? When like all the responsibility of guitar is on you? <laughs> it does. It's funny you ask that now because you know we're about to do our first uh show that we've done in, in years uh for, for you know a little record release party and uh we decided to ask if, uh, the engineer that i'd work with who was a great great guitar player to uh just join us just to you know embellish things a little bit oh really and, um yeah uh you know i it's a strange thing because <clears throat> like being the uh like have having to like being able to control the dynamics you know when we're when I'm playing when we're playing a song so you know when you're the only guitar player you can do that easily and and luckily you, you know the guys I'm playing with know if I want to you know bring something down they'll they'll go down with me you know and make it more exciting we we know um and sometimes if, if there's another guitar player because I've tried it, uh, you know, they don't really want to just be playing what you played and helping fill it up, you know, the, uh, which is, I guess, a natural thing. But um, it's nice to have a little help back there, <laughs> you know, so live, so you, I could maybe, you know, think a little more about interacting with the band and or the audience and uh, not have to focus so much it's re- it is really hard because you're to singing both. too i mean you are like if people don't know i mean you're the singer and guitar player so yeah you're you're like double duty and almost triple duties when you are playing basic rhythm and lead at the same time you're kind of doing three Absolutely. things yep <laughs> it's uh it's a challenge but i you know uh i kind of enjoy it when it uh when it comes to recording, are you someone who enjoys kind of going in and tweaking songs in the studio, screwing around with things, or do you go in have kind of everything ready and just kind of get it recorded and get out? Yeah, I I kind of like to you know make sure that I'm getting what it, I hear in my head or before I go in there, you know, but um. I tend to, uh, you know, uh, do a lot of stuff on the fly, and uh, you know, putting producing these things. Just I hear counter melodies or uh, different parts that I hadn't planned on. Um, I don't mind changing things, like in mid process, whatever works best. For- but uh, usually, I, I know what I want. You know, it kind of going there kind of going with like you were talking about like having things in your head ready and like knowing all that as far as on the new record variants of vibe is there a song you would say like you know that that thought like it really is i think you have the song in your head versus what comes out and trying to like you know at at least as accurately as you can get it out the way you have in your head is there a song on this record that you think came out like 
almost exactly like you heard it in your head originally, like that original thought you had, you successfully got it to record like you had heard it. Um, yeah, I think all of them. <laughs> the whole thing? <laughs> Pretty much. You know, yeah. Uh, you know, when, I, when you're doing them yourself and you're producing it, it's more likely to happen that way. It, more more likely you're going to find that you're going to get on tape or file, whatever, <laughs> uh, what you were what you were hearing in your head, you know? Uh, yeah, I was able to, to do that. Those songs are pretty much the way I wanted them to be. Nice. That is, I mean, I feel like that's uh, one of the biggest things you can ask for as an artist that it, that it like comes Absolutely. out. Um, for as close to that as, as can be as close to, you know, if, for me, or, you know, if I if hear it and say to myself, I can live with that. Then that's a that's a then an, an achievement. Sometimes that's as good as you can get. Like you should take that and exactly. Be like, like this is good for this. When you start mixing songs, you can go on and on forever. <laughs> you know, a friend of mine, a great engineer, uh, Frank Gallagher, told me that there's no such thing as a perfect mix, and he's right. There's always a little something you would want to change. That it, you know what? That is probably true. Like I would, I'm sure if you ask anybody, like about any record they've ever been on, at some point it could be 20 years later, and they'll be like, you know, I wish that snare tone was different. Like I wish, <laughs> I wish like that one thing, or there was like more reverb on this or something. Exactly. I mean, you, you know, you could, it's endless. It, a mix can be infinite. <laughs> I mean, in the old days, uh, bands spent months mixing songs, but you know, I, I've never had that luxury. Maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I don't know. Some records I, I've had, uh, I've had this conversation with people, and I think sometimes that urgency, it, like your first idea and that first, even sometimes your first take is your best one. Sometimes overthinking it too much can be that's not good for the song. Sometimes, absolutely, yeah. Where was uh, I, where did you guys record the new record at? Uh, a place called Mercy Sound Studios on Fourteenth uh, Street. By any Avenue B in uh, down the Lower East Side, and uh, how long did it take to record the record? Um, well, uh, you know, because of the pandemic and all that, um, it slowed things up. But uh, it was recorded over a you know period of years, so it's not like I, we went in to record the album and oh, and like one know. take, you just kind of like kept going in and kind of doing a little here, a little there, kind of. Yeah. Um, you know, because also it's not like you know we, we got a uh, Universal Records said go make a re- an album and uh, you know they're not we, knocking uh, we, down your door. Where's we that record? Went up to a farm in Massachusetts just to record, and uh, you know it, it wasn't like that. You know <laughs> how, how uh, you know speaking of uh, speaking of record labels though, you are you are on a. Uh, a great record label wicked cool uh, records which you brought up earlier how did you start working with them how did uh, that relationship all come about well, i've known steven van Zandt for uh, you know a long time since the 80s and uh, and, uh we're, we're some friends you know and, and um and i had seen him ran into him and uh he was in a st- recording studio at the same time i was i long you know back in 2012 and i told him i you know I was working on my, uh, my brother's second solo album. He said, after this, I'm, I, I want to start uh, getting back into you know, writing songs and recording again. And he said, uh, well, let me know. You know, I sent him one little demo I made uh, on a webcam. And he said, that, that's great. And um, When I finally finished to re- enough recordings, I got back in touch with him. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's great. I uh, sent him a bunch of songs, and uh, he said, this shit is fucking great. <laughs> he texted me back. <laughs> that's a good sign. I feel like those are, if, if that's if that's his, like, reaction to it, I'd say you're on to something good. I was a little, little offended by his language. But, uh, <laughs> I, I, I took the compliment in the spirit it was meant. <laughs> but, yeah, no, no, I was thrilled, man. When he, uh, you know, his re- I saw his text, this shit is fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow! All right. Must you know. be must be good. Out- yeah, he sounds uh, he sounds enthusiastic. <laughs> outside of uh, 
outside of music for you, like, do you have any other like creative outlets or does all your creative energy go into uh, making music? Um, well, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I've, I've been uh, too busy to have time to think about <laughs> hobbies, <laughs> really. Um, I do write, you know, when I can. I like to write stories. Um, I have some things uh, that maybe will be could be books at some point. But um, right now, all I really can focus on is writing songs and recording them and making. Um, actually, like as you know, I got to go shoot a video. Um, so you know, you have to think about what you uh, good, good ideas for videos and. The, the process is constant, but, um, no, as, aside from that right now, I'm just trying to, uh, clear out the, all the messes in my living room. <laughs> you, you did. I mean, like you were just saying, you know, you mentioned writing stories and stuff like that. And I was going to ask you, like, could you ever see yourself and not even just a memoir, but I mean, just any kind of just writing a book, be it, be it fiction, nonfiction. I mean, is that something you could see yourself doing again? I guess it's kind of sounded like you just hinted at a yes. Yeah, exactly. I just did hint at a yes. Yeah. <laughs> I guess um, that is basically what you said. <laughs> right. I, I did actually write a, you know, a short story uh, about the, the days we used to hitchhike to Rockaway Beach in 1967 when I was like, you know, 12, 13 oh, nice. years old. Um, yeah, a whole short story about that uh, called Rockaway's Hitch or Woodhaven Hitch. Um, and we would hitch down Wood Woodhaven Boulevard. Um, and I created, uh, it, you know, I kind of combined truth with fiction and it's a cute little story. But uh, yeah, I like to write. You know, that, that book was so hard to write. And, uh, you know, though I tried to balance it with some humor, uh, it was, you know, it took a lot out of me. It was draining emotionally. So I, I would, would like to write something that would, that's just fun. Yeah, you so do you, so if you wrote something again, you, you'd probably be a lot kind of, yeah, it sounds a little lighter. Like you probably wouldn't go for the kind of memoir kind of thing again. you kind of more like right. light and fun. Exactly. For uh, I mean, fun, fun is important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're reading, you definitely you want to be fun and entertained. For like writing, I mean, for going into though with I slept with Joey Ramone, I mean, for me looking at someone writing a book, and I mean that was that was your first book, right? Yes. So was, I, yeah, first book. I mean, what? Where do you start with something like that? That really intrigues me. Like for like, if it's your first book and you go to do something like that, like. Where do you even start to put something like that together? Like, where do you begin to put a book together? Well, um, I began at the beginning. Uh, the <laughs> only way that I uh, thought of doing writing that story was, was chronologically, um, which I guess makes it easier. But I didn't think this story, you know, and I don't know how a, a screenplay is going to be, but, you know, where you can jump around in times, um, time periods but i just you know i had to start it right this chronologically so that kind of uh took any mystery about how about that process out of the out of the uh scenario but so it made it kind of easier to know that i was going to do write it that way but remembering all that stuff was uh very difficult um, you know, it's like it's a wall. Of, oh, your past is uh, behind a wall of ice, and you got to keep chipping away at it each time you want to get back to your childhood. And you know, um, and if you step away from it for a while, that wall freezes over again. And when you want to go back there, you got to break it down all <laughs> over again. That you had know? that had to be gratifying getting that like when you were all done. I'm sure like it it had to be gratifying once it was all finished and like ready for the world. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. I mean, you know, it was uh, six years, seven years. Uh, wow, Jeez. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, so, and I, obviously it is getting adapted into uh, into film. Was that something you always saw happening, or is that kind of a uh, you know what I mean? Like from the beginning, did you think this would eventually happen, or did that come to a surprise to you when uh, when it was all no, getting adapted? I always thought it was a, a story worthy of a film. Oh, totally. You know, 
Yeah. Uh, whether it, that would happen, I never, you know, I never really thought about, um, I never, or I never, you know, I didn't have any illusions about it <laughs> being, becoming a movie, but I always, I certainly thought it should be. I, I didn't know uh, when, when I was writing it. I mean, I think it definitely, yeah, I could, I could see it being adapted. I think it would come out really, uh, really good. And something I was thinking too, I wanted to ask you because I mean, yeah, you know, it's the book, you know, it's a family memoir and everything, but I mean, anyone who's read it, I mean, you're obviously a big part of Joey Ramone's life being his brother. So like in many ways, your life is also kind of being adapted for film. Like, is that kind of surreal or weird to think about it all? I don't know how far like the film is in yet. But I mean, is that weird to also think that in you know at the same time your childhood and your life is going to kind of be shown up on the big screen in that way? It's bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally weird. Yeah, uh, I can't even imagine. Uh, I'm trying not to think about <laughs> how it's going to be watching uh, people reenact scenes from my life and my family's life, and uh, it's going to be strange. I, yeah. I can imagine. I mean, there's parts of that book, even just like your, just your part of your life. You know, I mean, even even kind of joy removed. Just some of the parts of your life that I mean seem like they'd be great in a film, but also just that'd be wild to see somebody well, I reenacting. Could, I couldn't write my brother's story without I, I take myself out of it. Well, you were a you part know, of just, it. Uh, yeah, and you know, we had. I wanted it to be uh, about family experiences and you know uh family dynamics and not, not about uh, a rock band so much but obviously that was you know a big part of his life and both of our lives oh, totally. so there's that backdrop to it but you know the main story i wanted to get across is uh, one of uh somebody who is um you know uh, can um, sort of can um misfit or had that misfit onus on them or somebody like a kid who was told by doctors you know a kid whose mother was told by doctors your son is never going to be able to function in society he's never be, he won't be able to function on his own he's he had you know really bad ocd and some other problems you know and how he flourished oh i mean and, uh, became overcame uh, the odds and to achieve what he did that, that was the main uh, theme of the story i wanted to write i mean yeah it, it's and, it's a great story because you're right i mean the man i mean punk rock i mean look at look at generations and generations still today like i mean not a not a small i mean a huge huge mark in punk rock history and just music history you take punk out of it just music in general like I mean, that is that is yeah against all odds. I mean, what a great story, you know. I mean, exactly. It wasn't just a you know, if it if it it didn't have something remarkable about it, um, I wouldn't have bothered. But you know, that's a story that I thought could, you know, a lot of people could relate to. Not just a about a rock guys in a rock band traveling around and you know uh, who, uh, you know, that kind of a movie, but. Uh, you know, something beyond that, more universal, you know. Another thing you do every every year, you do put together the amazing uh, Joy Ramone birthday bash. And I mean, kind of kind of just like asking like with the book, and I mean, I'm sure there's so much go behind the scenes. I mean, this is another one. What What do you have to do to put something like this on? This seems like it would take a lot, and there's probably a lot to do behind the scenes to get that uh, show going on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, that's why it's, it's very tiring. <laughs> and, you know, uh, I normally would be starting to work on that event in uh, January. You know, um, it, it used to be a much bigger thing. Uh, and when I did it at places like Irving Plaza, it held a thousand people flying in bands from all over the world. And uh, it just became too complicated. So I narrowed it down to a smaller event in New York City, but try to stream it. And, uh, the past couple of years, obviously, there was uh, I had to do it virtually, um, which was it was great that I was able to do, to do that. But I'm not even sure uh, what I'm going to do this year. Yeah, uh, I, I, because things 
things were so uncertain at the time I would normally start trying to ask bands to come uh, I didn't feel comfortable asking bands to travel uh, you know last month so I'm kind of behind the schedule a little bit I'm not even I'm not sure uh, what I'm going to do this year but I know uh, you know what am I going to do on the guy's birthday I don't want to be uh, thinking about him I'd rather be doing something that's going to um, kind of preoccupy my mind from uh, him not being here. Yeah. And having a lot of people around certainly always helps. Yeah, celebrating, I mean, celebrating life, his life and his music and everything. I, it, I mean, it's such a great thing. It's something I've always wanted to uh, get to. But, I mean, I can I can see where, yeah, the last couple of years would probably not be easy to get something like that together and get everyone in New yeah. York City. I mean, and that too, you're also in New York City you know, the bigger the city right now is not always where people want to be. So, like, all that stuff has right. to be kind of hard. Yeah, but, and uh, I'm not sure what I'll do, but, uh, yeah. It's, uh, I did it for 20 years. So, um, <laughs> You've been at it a, a while. It, yeah. I, I, hopefully I'll be able to do something. Hopefully. A couple of times, I uh, there's some video out there which is great. You've you've done uh, at the birthday bashes the love triangle with Richie and CJ Ramon a few times. I mean, what's that like going up there and performing like your brother's songs with those surviving Ramones? What what is that like? Oh, uh, it's, it's just a blast. I mean, you know, the, we, we have a great time when we do that. You know, yeah, Richie and CJ. It's just pure fun, man. It's just you know done that out of just pure love and respect for Joey and. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. Maybe you know, maybe we'll be able to do that again someday. I mean, just for a few songs, it's fun. It's not a uh, nothing you know serious. Um, but yeah, it's a great feeling. We all we we, we love it. We very, love doing it. Very nice. And I, I guess I also just realized you are the final love triangle to have on the show. I've now had all three of you on the show. I've had the whole love Good. triangle. <laughs> well, but, that makes it complete. It, it, the complete love triangle. So I, I got a few more for you here just real quick, and then I'll let you go uh, record that that video. Um, for Mutated Music, I mean, do you have, going forward, do you have any set goals for the group? Is there anything you really want to accomplish with uh, Mutated Music at all? Uh, we want to conquer the world. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, well, we, we want to rescue rock and roll at one song at a time. But... Yeah, I got the. We got. We have a lot of plans, man. We're just getting started. Nice, nice. So Put we it that way. So, is there anything else we should be on the lookout for the rest of the year? Be it mutated music or anything else, uh, Mickey Lee related. What should we uh, be looking out for? Well, um, as you know, there's an album uh, that just came out. Um, we'll be making videos for all the other songs that are on that album. Um, and hopefully getting out there on the road. I'm recording new songs as we speak. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's more to come. Plenty more to come. Very movies, nice. Movies, records, songs, uh, holograms. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Mutated, uh, mutated merchandise and mutated money. If you want to <laughs> buy bitcoins. <laughs> <laughs> oh my uh, god i love yeah, it we got it it's a, it's a mute, NF, mutated money is an a, a, nft <laughs> i don't know it's uh, a million dollar idea isn't it uh, maybe it's a it's a it's a <laughs> mutated million mo- i can't even say it there you go <laughs> i can't mutated even say millions. it <laughs> mutated millions yeah mutated millions man i i absolutely <laughs> love it so, so where can uh, where can people find you? Where can they find the band online? Where do we go grab variants of Vibe if we want? Which I definitely grab it. We'll play some songs here in a second. But great, great record. Where can we? Uh, where can we go? Thank go you grab very much, all man. that I stuff. Appreciate. It. Um, I'm glad you like the whole record. That's a, that's you know the, the important thing. It's so rare that uh, the, you, the whole album uh, that people like a whole album. Um, you can find it. There's MickeyLee dot com. I guess is the easiest thing to recommend. Go there. Um, but uh, 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 wickedcoolrecords.com to uh, find the stuff. It's also on uh, Spotify and, uh, you know, all those formats. 
All right, beautiful. Uh, it, all the, our videos are on uh, official Mickey Lee on YouTube. Oh, you have a great YouTube page. That's a good place to go check out. You got a lot of stuff on there. A lot of fun stuff on there, right? So, yeah. Well, Those very, are uh, some options. Very, very um, nice. But people should listen to uh, Little Stevens Underground Garage. Oh, great on show. Sirius XM, Channel 21. Yeah, it's a great, probably the best station uh, there is. And um, you can hear mutated music on there as well. Beautiful. Well, we will uh, actually we'll hear some right now because we're going to play a few songs off Variants of Vibe on the Power Chord Hour. Right here on the Power Chord Hour podcast off Variants of Vibe, that was Mickey Lee's Mutated Music with Standing in the Dark. Before that was Little Christine and opening up that block of music was no fun anymore. All three of those off the new record, Variants of Vibe. Make sure you go pick that up now out on Wicked Cool Records. Thank you uh, very much to Mickey for calling in. That was a lot of fun. I was bummed though we were uh, we were doing it and he had to, uh, he mentioned in there he had to go uh, record a uh, music video. And I, I think our uh, our schedules clashed. He was very, very cool about it because at first I... Uh, I was like, I, I called him for the interview. He's like, oh, we're doing an interview. I was about to go record a, a music video. But he was very cool. He was like, all right, like, let me uh, let me figure this out, and I'll, I'll get it all worked out. And he did. But uh, I would have loved to talk to him longer. I would definitely love to have him back on. There was tons of questions I would still like to ask him. But, uh, you know, keeping in mind he had to go record a music video, I kind of kept it short and sweet, you know. But uh, I had a lot of fun talking to him. Really liked the new album and, uh, you know, great to ask him a few questions about his brother Joey Ramone. Obviously one of the uh, most important singers and, uh, I mean, punk rock, just any kind of thing. You can take punk out of it, just, you know, music in general. Joey Ramone is a, uh, I mean, is just a, is a, a important figure. I mean, he's a legend. He's an important figure, and uh, I mean, one of the one of the uh, you know originators of punk rock, if you will. I mean, just you know, a legend, a legend. I I love the Ramones. I don't have to tell you that. One of my favorites, and uh, I just don't get people who don't like the Ramones. I don't understand it. I uh, I saw someone the other day say they didn't like the Ramones online on Twitter, and uh, not that not that people were like mean to them or anything like that but like i mean i was thinking the same thing but like everyone's like really like what like you know like you there's certain bands it's like oh okay i get it maybe you don't maybe you don't uh you know maybe it's not your thing but the ramones aren't one of those bands you gotta you gotta like the ramones i refuse to uh believe that somebody doesn't like the ramones just insane but uh yeah i want to thank mickey again a lot of fun and uh i can't wait to see that music video i can't remember what what a song it's for but i'll be excited to uh see that video when it comes out and uh you know i'm, I'm kind of interested in seeing the uh i slept with joey ramon as a movie i'll be interested to see how that uh comes out the book is really good i'm in the middle of reading it right now and i'm about halfway done and uh i, I talked about this on the last uh or i guess two podcasts now ago on the february rundown but um, it was a book I wanted to read for years, kept meaning to read. But that, but listen, like my list of books meaning to read is huge. So I mean, it's one of probably fifty. And uh, you know, I read, but I don't read as often as I should. So I get to books very slowly. And once I found out I was interviewing Mickey, that seemed like the best time to start reading it. So uh, I I did begin reading it, and I'm happy I picked it up because a really really good book. And uh, if you've not read it yet, definitely check it out. I mean, great, uh, great stories about not just Joey. Like, I mean, really, Mickey's life. And Mickey played with, you know, all the other uh, Ramones. He knew, basically, he knew uh, Johnny and Dee Dee and Tommy before uh, before Joey did. So, I mean, he goes uh, way back and uh, has some great stories. Um, there's a, there's a, a whole chapter in there, Clowns for Progress, that uh, I won't give it away but uh, I, I like just that, and it's all it's all Mickey's story. It has nothing really to do with Joey, but I mean, just that part in a film, I I could see being intense. Like I, I could just see that being part of a film. Like the whole thing plays out almost like a movie. So there's a bunch of stuff that uh, I, I think would work well. You know, I'm always I'm always on the fence about making like like rock bios and stuff. But you know, this one this one I'd be interested in kind of seeing. I'm I'm a little more on board with this one. 
than a replacements one. They keep talking about doing one for the replacements, and I'm like, you need to leave that alone. Like, that's it's going to be shit. Like, whatever they make, it's going to be fucking shit if the, on that replacements one. It's not going to be good. Um, I have a little more faith that I slept with Joey Ramone. So that, that one I, uh, I'd give a little more of a chance to. But uh, either way, book is great. Mickey's new record is great. It, it's all good. It is uh, all really good stuff you should check out. And also be on the lookout for uh, this year's this year's uh, Joey Ramone birthday bash here in a couple months. And uh, I, I'm excited to uh, see the pre- or the performers this year. It's always something I would love to go to. I mean, he always has great lineups. And I would love to see him do the Love Triangle, too, with CJ and Richie. That, uh, that would be amazing. And I'm, and I'm very stoked that I've now, the triangle is complete. I've interviewed all three of them. And uh, I would love to now go see them all live because I've seen none of them live. And I would absolutely love to. But uh, yeah, that is going to be this episode for the Power Chord Hour podcast. If you would, go follow us online. We are at Power Chord Hour on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Like us, follow us, all that good stuff. Would really, really appreciate that. Please go, uh, if you're not already subscribed to the podcast, subscribe wherever you listen to pods, new episodes every Monday, and uh, please rate and review if you would. That would be, that really helps out if you if you leave a uh, review and rate us wherever you listen to this, uh, would definitely be appreciated, like really, really appreciated. So if you do that, and uh, I will be, I will be eternally grateful to you. And uh, hit me up, powercordhour at gmail.com, if you, uh, if you're looking to, uh, advertise or sponsor something you can hit me up there we do it real cheap so if you want to you know if you want me to talk about your product or your brand or whatever on here hit me up powercordhour at gmail.com and we'll get something worked out and uh yeah what else radio show new radio show every friday night on 107.9 wrfa in jamestown new york you can also listen to that online at wrfalp.com there's a big old listen button you hit that and you can listen to the station wherever you're at and uh, tune in Friday nights, 8 to midnight there. And uh, yeah, always fun. It's, uh, it's you know, actually like for this week with uh, with this interview with Mickey, like we're going to play the whole record after. Like we've, we've started kind of getting into that with uh, playing whole albums. So, uh, you know, if you want to tune into that and hear this, I'm going to play the whole record for you. You know, on here we play a couple songs, but I'm not going to play the entire record on a podcast. But, um, you know, on the radio show, I'll play the whole damn thing. So it, it's kind of fun, you know, to talk about music. Or, you know, talk about the album and then play the whole album, you know. So, very cool. We're going to try to do that just about every time we have a guest on now that we're, like, interviewing for a record. Um, do something like that. So, I'm stoked. But yeah, check out the radio show. Follow us online. Subscribe to the podcast. Rate and review if you would. Hit me up, powercordhour at gmail.com. And I believe that is it. So, uh, thank you very much for checking out this week's episode. And uh, for the Power Court Hour podcast, I'm Anthony Merchant. Thank you so much for listening.